Thanks, Brian. Nice to see everybody again today. Uh, fighter remediation uh, term is rather new and is actually even uh, uh, was the term was coined in 1991 by uh, an engineering firm. But actually, what what really the process is uh, that goes into fighter remediation has been around a long time. Uh, since the day of mining and industrialization in Europe, trees were used to uh, uh, remediate uh, mine spoils uh, that have been when the land was degraded. So this, uh, like so many things, has been going on for a long time naturally also with natural ecosystems. But phytoremediation is uh, a relatively new term and is, as a matter of fact, the term since 1991 has sort of uh, developed into what they call phytotechnology. Now what I want to do today is, since I've been working in this field for a long time now, I use poplars and willows, I want to get talk to you about some of the things we run into uh, when we uh, deploy them on the landscape and uh, some of the things you need to know about from the, rather than the theoretical side, the practical side. So what is phytoremediation? Well, it's the use of plants to remediate and clean up uh, contaminated soil, sludge, sediment, and water. It's not just hybrid poplar, which a lot of people associate with it, but we use all different types of plants. It just happens that poplars and willows take up a lot more water. We've seen that in some of the previous slides, and that's one of the keys. So here are the terms you run into in this um, phytotechnology, phytoremediation. Uh, plants can uh, take up uh, the contaminants from the soil, extract them. Uh, that's one process. They can also volatilize them, take up the like a, a uh, compound and volatilize it into the air into uh, infinite, infinite dilution. Uh, they can stabilize uh, a contaminant in the soil so it doesn't move around or blow around. And they can also degrade the uh, uh, contaminant in the soil in the root zone where the microbes have their home. So trees and plants provide the uh, uh, home for the microbes that do so much of the degrading. So it's not just the plant, it's the overall rhizosphere. And then really the key, as I mentioned a couple times now, is how much water the tr plants are taking up because that's the way it, uh, we move it out of the soil and out of the water into uh, uh, a, uh, a safer situation. Now we can apply these uh, uh, applications, uh, Fido, in many ways. We've heard a lot about buffers. That's one way we uh, do it. We put b uh, a buffer between the contaminated soil and the, usually it's a wetland or a stream. We can also, uh, we've been ta here talking about this morning, vegetative filter filters, that's what we were hearing about. You can take wastewater, for example, and apply it directly to a planted area, and that's called a vegetative filter. You can also, uh, if you have a spill, you can put plant trees directly on the spill in hope of taking up and cleaning it up. And then uh, you can also use, uh, more and more these days, landfills are a major problem worldwide, and we're using vegetation to cap that rather than just using a, a, a soil cap. Now, uh, one of the things that's really important, we've been hearing about that here today already, is uh, just the choice of the material that you're going to use for the, uh, for the application. And so the origin of the plant is very important. It can, you know, native plants are very good. If you're going to use uh, the um, hybrids, then you have to use ones that are adapted to the region. In other words, you can't uh, plant, uh, as I said last night, eucalypts in Minnesota. Uh, the soil is important, and uh, so the type of soil we heard from Elizabeth really matters. And the microclimate, uh, whether a uh, plant is frost sensitive is important, whether it can take the heat, all those things. And then some of these plant materials are very limited by pests. 
And so you have to know the pests that are in the area and you have to be ready to take care of them if they become a problem, as well as diseases. And we, in Poplar community, throughout the history of Poplar community, diseases have been a problem and the breeders are always trying to stay ahead of the diseases that are really very debilitating. A lot of the Shriner clones I talked to about last year are very sensitive to a canker disease called septoria. And in the eastern United States, that's been devastating to many projects. Uh, that it usually comes on after about five years, and then it, it actually destroys the plant. Then the application goals are really important in choosing your plants. And so, uh, and then the policies that they have, and, and what's very uh, challenging is a lot of times they vary by state. Like for example, some places you cannot apply some of these wastewaters in the air that cannot make it airborne. So we saw a lot of pictures this morning of spraying uh, water on plants. In some states you can't do that. It has to be dripped, drip app applied. So here's the key. Uh, 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 Lou Lick and I did a paper some years ago and really the whole paper centers around taking up water. In other words, you've got a living pump, a hydraulic pump that the plant is. So you're taking up water and from the soil and from the, not, usually not the groundwater, but usually the soil or uh, the, uh, if you have a container that you're using. And then uh, pumping it from there up through the plant. The plant does its thing through its biochemistry and then uh, releases into the atmosphere in a non-toxic way and into an infinite dilution in the air. But the microbes, as I said earlier, are really important. And here's, in central Illinois, we had a uh, project where there was uh, uh, a lot of PCB contamination, which are not mobile. And then we had a number of solvents. So a Duke's mixture in this particular uh, area that was a former industrial plant. And so we were asked to install poplars and willows. Some were in in container type uh, sleeves and others were just uh, planted directly in auger holes. And then we had worked at the University of Florida with a microbiologist that knew how to identify microbes. And that technology has really increased now. You can do the DNA of a microbe these days if you want to. So, and there's tens of thousands of different microbes in the soils, depending on which area of the country you're in and whatnot. They're ubiquitous though. And here on the right, as you look at it, is the control plant just the, from the roots, but then uh, just the, uh, con excuse me, the control soil on the right. And then on the left are the uh, uh, different, we, we were looking at uh, PCE, and uh, TCE contamination, and you can see how many microbes in those bars on the left were, uh, in, how much it increased with a plant in the soil as opposed to no plants. So there's regulators on all these sites, and so you have to work with them. Each state has a different name and a different regulator, but they have a timeline. Uh, Fido does not work instantaneously. If you need it tomorrow, Fido is not for you. Uh, the depth is important. You've got to work in the root zone. If it's too deep, the contamination, a lot of times phyto is not the application. And also, you've got to have a budget for maintenance and monitoring. I heard that this morning. It's wonderful that uh, some people are budgeting that now, but most are not. Most, are, most do not put money into that. And then disposal is a problem. And then the last thing is you've got to be safe. And, you know, if you kill a person, uh, doing a project, you have not, you're not gonna be in very good uh, uh, situation. So um, there's goals with uh, that, and also be aware, be aware of utilities above ground and uh, below ground. And so, uh, you know, you're, you're using equipment that are, are dangerous, so safety is really important in these projects. And there are two books I wanna bring to your attention that are really important. This book is more theoretical and it's been around since 2002. And then uh, the one that's recent is really fantastic because it brings together plants with the landscape. Uh, it's uh, written by some Harvard uh, 
uh, grad graduates and professors, and it's really an excellent book on the applied aspects of FIDO. If it's called FIDO, I urge you to take a look at these. Thank you.